When a team competes at the highest levels of endurance racing for over 20 years, they experience great success such as back-to-back -back championships. Corvette Racing has dominated GT endurance racing for so long that the only way to go is forward and repeat. The father of the Corvette, Zora Arkis Duntov, believed that a sports car had to prove itself on the track before hitting the road. This heritage lives on the 8th generation Corvette. For 25 years, Corvette owners and fans have supported the Corvette racing team, which has won 9 Le Mans 24 hour class titles, 10 American Le Mans series titles, and 5 IMSA championships. They are the most successful American team renowned for their dedication to excellence, teamwork, innovation, and all the above dependability. This video is a full remake complete history of Corvette racing throughout 25 years. The eternal triumph of the Corvette racing team's legacy continues. After proving itself in the GT1, GT2, and GTE Pro categories, Chevrolet enters the GT3 category for the 2024 season with the sleek and street-inspired Corvette Z06 GT3R. Pratt and Miller will continue to lead the Corvette racing team operating under Pratt Miller Motorsports for GT3 competition. However, the team will have limited factory support. Corvette Racing was the official racing program for General Motors, using four generations of the Chevy Corvette to develop race cars with a yellow livery and an American fan base. Although GM has supported racing programs involving the Corvette since the mid-1950s, every Corvette race car before 1999 competed by private and small teams with some success. In 1999, General Motors established Corvette Racing as a factory racing team in partnership with Pratt Miller Engineering. Their goal was to participate in sports car racing internationally with the Corvette. The two constructors, Pratt Miller and Riley Scott, spent two years developing its brand new platform and building a race car from the heavily modified Corvette C5 to compete globally, called the C5R. General Motors aimed to demonstrate that the 1997 C5 Corvette was not just in an American muscle car, but a legitimate sports car that could compete in the recently launched American Le Mans series and at the prestigious 24 Hours of Le Mans. To work around limited regulations at the time, the team used heavily modified road car mules to test the V8 engine and equipment for the racing cars. They rehearsed the C5R for the limited scale debut 1999 season in the ALMS. The Corvette team debuted two C5Rs at the 1999 24 Hours of Daytona, which was then part of the United States Road Racing Championship. For 1999, the C5R had a silver and black livery sponsored by GM Goodrich. 2000 would start the signature yellow livery that Corvette Racing became world known for. Ron Fellows, Chris Nifo, and Andy Pilgrim ran a test to assess the durability and reliability of the car, which are crucial factors in endurance racing. To simulate a 24-hour race, the team ran a test at Daytona, running 6 hours across 4 days back-to-back. -back. Doug Feehan debuted the car at one of the world's toughest endurance races for two reasons. It generated high interest and the team felt the car was ready. The C5R, driven by Ron Fellows, Chris Nifo, and John Pohl Jr. led the GT2 class for most of the 24-hour race. However, their chances of victory slipped away as they finished in third place due to engine issues. Despite this setback, the GM executives were still impressed with what they saw in their first ever race. The second race for the C5R ran at the season opening 12 hours of Sebring and the American Le Mans series competing in the GTS class. The factory team ran a limited season in 1999, running 6 out of 8 rounds to develop the car. Learning from the car's flaws and discovering what was needed to make the car competitive, it would give the Chrysler Dodge Viper run by the French squad, Team Orca, a good run for its money. The C5R battled hard against the leading Viper, ultimately winning the 1999 and 2000 ALMS titles, posing a threat to the Corvette team. Although the team had made numerous alterations to the C5R, the pace of the Viper was so superior that it left them with no choice but to make additional adjustments. 
the 6 liter LS1 V8 engine got replaced with a bigger 7 liter V8, producing 600 horsepower and remained the standard powertrain for the C5R, thanks to Catec engine development building the C5R engines. However, after coming so close to their first victory, the Corvette team was loaded with confidence. In 2000, a new version of the C5R arrived, and they entered the crown jewel of endurance racing. Despite returning for another shot at the Rolex 24 Daytona, the Orca Viper still beat them. When debuting at the 24 Hours of Le Mans 2000, the C5R finished in 3rd and 4th place, trailing behind the victorious Vipers. The 12-hour Sebring race was a similar story when Team Orca clinched a whole podium victory. During the 2000 season, the C5R only won two races, beating the Orca Viper at Texas and Petit Le Mans, and settled for third in the American Le Mans Series Championship. 2001 proved to be the Corvette team's genuine display of strength and skill. They campaigned the whole season that year, securing six class wins, including Petit Le Mans and the ALMS Team and Manufacturers titles and the GTS category. In the Daytona 24-hour race, Corvette won with drivers Johnny O'Connell and Ron Fellows. The event also marked the debut of NASCAR drivers Dale Earnhardt and Earnhardt Jr. The C5R also secured the first of its three GTS victories at Le Mans. Due to the following year's rule changes at Daytona, the team didn't return for a long time. The team was much more victorious in the 2002 season by securing 9 wins, including their first Sebring victory and their second Le Mans victory. Despite competition from the Celine S7R, a surprisingly competitive Ferrari Maranello, and a host of privateer Vipers, the C5R was unstoppable. In 2003, the private backing ProDrive Ferrari 550 sat to challenge the dominant Corvette team in both American Le Mans series and 24 hours of Le Mans. Although they weren't strong early in the season, they managed to win the final four races, including 10 hours of Petit Le Mans. The Ferrari ended Corvette races Le Mans streak, beating them on the 50th anniversary of the Chevy Corvette with a special livery. However, Corvette barely secured their third championship by only four points ahead of the Pro Drive team in the team's standings. In 2004, the Corvette C5R hit its peak performance by sweeping the entire season and earning its fourth consecutive title in the American Le Mans series. They also achieved a 1-2 victory at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. However, this marked the final season for the Corvette C5R run by the factory team as it was bound to be replaced by its successor, the C6R, for the upcoming 2005 season. In total, the Corvette C5R has 31 class wins in the ALMS, 3 class wins at Le Mans, and 1 overall victory at Daytona. The all-new C6R GT1 launched at the Detroit Auto Show in January 2005 next to the new Chevy Corvette C6 Z06, which shares the streetcar's body styling. Developed by Pratt Miller, the C6R featured significant changes to enhance its performance on the racetrack. These include a shorter overall length but a longer wheelbase, a weight savings aluminum chassis, a front-mounted radiator grille, fixed and exposed headlights, and improved aerodynamics. With its powerful 590 horsepower LS7 7 liter V8 and cutting edge features, it has resumed the previous dominance of the C5R with multiple ALMS titles and Le Mans 24 hours. Unlike its predecessor, which ran only select events until proven quick and reliable, the C6R competed the whole season right from its first year. The ProDrive Aston Martin DBR9 put up a fair fight with the Corvette in 2005 and 2006 with many victories. Despite the Corvette team taking some beatings, they still dominated the modern GT1 era of racing. Corvette continued their victory streak at Le Mans in 2005 and 2006, with 13 straight wins spanning two seasons in the ALMS. 25 consecutive wins from 2007 to 2009 season, and 4 American Le Mans Series GT1 Championships. The GT1 era in the American Le Mans Series ended in 2009 after the Le Mans 24-hour race. 
Corvette Racing would transition to the GT2 category after the team ran a limited season in 2009 with the GT1 C6R. It only competed in three races that year, securing a 1-2 victory at Sebring back-to-back -back and again at Long Beach. To celebrate its retirement, the number 63 Corvette took first place at Le Mans by Antonio Garcia, John O'Connell, and Jen Magnuson, defeating the likes of Aston Martin, Saline, and Lamborghini GT1s. The GT1 C6R was pure dominance with 39 GT1 class wins. In mid-2009, Pratt & Miller launched the GT2 version of the C6R based on the production Corvette C6 ZR1. The GT2 class rules required a closer look at production-based streetcar counterparts. That's why the C6R uses the streetcar's body, aluminum chassis, steering system, smaller front splitter, wheel wing, and steel brakes. The GT2 category limits the aerodynamic package, so the gain in mechanical grip makes up for the loss of downforce. The new engine rules forced the 7-liter engine to downgrade to a 6-liter, which reduced the horsepower to just below 500. The ALMS GT2 and the GTE competition at Le Mans saw many factory efforts from the BMW M3, Ferrari 430 and 458, and Porsche 911. The GT2 C6R competed in the remaining five rounds of the 2009 ALMS season. It only took three races for the new GT2 to take its first victory. The season's finale race at Laguna Seca was a dramatic one. Jen Magnussen's number 3 C6R fought hard for first place in the GT2 class, closely chasing the number 45 Flying Lizard Porsche 911 driven by Jorg Bergmeister. However, Bergmeister, with a take-no-prisoners approach, intentionally pit-maneuvered Magnussen, causing his Corvette to collide head-on with the wall just before the finish line as the Porsche went on to cross the finish line first, winning the race. Without a doubt, Corvette still deserved that win. In 2010, the C6R GT2 powered a brand new 5.5 liter LS9 V8 to compete in the new unified GT class in the American Le Mans series and the GTE class at Le Mans. With its sleek design and unmatched performance, the C6R won a dozen races, including the 2011 24 Hours of Le Mans by Tommy Milner. Corvette also won the Team and Manufacturer Championships in 2012 and 2013 American Le Mans Series with the help of Tommy Milner, Oliver Gavin, Garcia, and Magnussen. In 2014, the American Le Mans Series merged with the Grand Am World Racing Series to form the Tudor United Sports Car Championship, later rebranded to the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship in 2016. Chevrolet and Pratt Miller built a phenomenal new GT racer to compete in the new GT LM category. The Corvette C7R was the race going version of the street legal C7 Z06 and shared unprecedented levels of engineering and components which included chassis architecture, engine technology and aerodynamic strategies. The flared fenders, front splitter, rear wing, and rear diffuser stood out, making the C7R the most aggressive looking Corvette racer with a 5.5 liter V8 producing around 500 horsepower. The GTLM class kept most of the same regulations as the previous GT class of the American Le Mans series. Corvette Racing utilized 5 years of data from the successful GT2 C6R to transfer plenty of the technology to the C7R. This resulted in the new C7R being immediately competitive in its debut season. The inaugural 2014 season of the Tudor Sports Car Championship marked Corvette Racing's return to the season opening Rolex 24 Daytona for the first time since 2001. The team accomplished four class wins back to back at such tracks like Long Beach, Laguna Seca, Watkins Glen, and Mo Sport Park. Even though they had consistent performance throughout the season, however, the factory SRT Motorsports team crowned both teams and drivers titles with the number 93 Dodge Viper. 2015 marked a turning point for Corvette Racing. They once again achieved the grand feat of winning the Triple Endurance Crown as they had done back in 2001. 
They won their class at the Rolex 24 Daytona, the 12 Hours of Sebring, and the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Throughout the season, Corvette Racing managed to secure a total of six GTLM class podiums, including two victories. Although their early season success was commandable, they ultimately finished third in the GTLM standings behind BMW and Porsche. The C7R had its most successful years in 2016 and 2017, winning the IMSA GTLM driver and manufacturer titles. New rules had merged into the GTLM class, similar to the GT3 specs, which allowed for a more significant aerodynamic upgrade. The C7R had a larger front splitter, side skirts, rear diffuser, and a larger rear wing mounted further back. The changes made the C7R look more feisty and provide better performance. Between 2016 and 2018, Corvette Racing achieved a remarkable 11 class victories and secured a repeat 1-2 victory at the 2016 Daytona race and two straight wins at Sebring. It thrashed the mighty GTLM competitors of the BMW M8, Ford GT, Ferrari 488, and Porsche 911. 2019 was the final season for the Corvette C7R by the factory team as it was bound to be replaced by the mid-engine C8R, debuting in the 2020 season. Over six seasons, the C7R won 16 races, including two at Daytona, three at Sebring, one victory at Le Mans, and eight EMSA championships, thanks to Antonio Garcia, Jen Magnuson, Oliver Gavin, and Tommy Milner. The Corvette C8R was the first mid-engine Corvette race car with a completely new racing engine developed by Pratt Miller, which differed from its predecessors. Before we give out more details, it is crucial to acknowledge the thunder sound of the Corvette V8 engines, tracing back to the C5R. However, the engine sound of the C8R is different from its predecessors and produces a higher pitch note. To hear the sound comparisons, listen to all the engine notes. Dearly missed the American thunder sound of the V8 engines. The C5R, the C6R, and C7R produce a wild sound with a cross-plane engine. The C8R produces an unusual sound due to its flat-plane engine and high RPMs. Flat-plane crank engines have an even firing order of cylinders, resulting in a higher-pitched exhaust note compared to the bass growl of the cross-plane American V8s. Also, flat-plane cranks are lightweight and have lower torque, allowing them to rev up higher and quicker. The C8R powers an LT6 5.5 liter V8 engine that makes 500 horsepower. It shares 100 parts with the production car and the most shared parts of any Corvette race car. Corvette switched to a mid-engine layout because of the superior balance, traction, and handling of a proper supercar. The C8R debuted running in the GTLM class at Rolex 24 Daytona in the 2020 season and contested against some of the world's biggest manufacturers such as Ferrari, BMW, and Porsche. Two factory number no. 3 and number no. 4 Corvettes at Daytona finished 4th and 7th place. Unfortunately, due to the worldwide pandemic, the IMSA championship restarted on the 4th of July 2020 at Daytona, but this time was a 2 hour and 40 minute sprint race. This gave the C8R a second attempt to chase victory and took its first win. 
followed by five more wins at Sebring, Road America, Virginia International Raceway, Mid-Ohio, and Charlotte Motor Speedway. It was enough for Corvette Racing to clinch the driver and manufacturer titles by Antonio Garcia and Jordan Taylor. For the fourth time in history since 2001, Corvette Racing stood on the top podium in first place at Daytona in 2021 and triumphed in the IMSA Championship again. After that, IMSA replaced the GTLM category with the new GTD Pro Class in 2022. At the time, this made the Corvette C8R ineligible to compete. As the IMSA GTD Pro Class follows the GT3 rules, the Corvette team did not yet have a full-fledged GT3 car, so the team modified the obsolete GTLM C8R to comply with the GTD regulations. However, 2022 was the worst season for the team because the C8R faced reliability issues and wasn't very competitive in its class. The squad, however, quickly bounced back to win at 12 hours of Sebring, but failed to win the season and placed third in the championship. On a high note in the FIA World Endurance Championship, Corvette Racing celebrated winning its first WEC title in the GTE AM class with 173 points, including the centenary edition of the 24 Hours of Le Mans by drivers Ben Keating. Nikki Katzberg and Nicholas Varone. 2023 was the final season for the GTE C8R. Over three seasons, the C8R won 22 races and eight MSA championships. GM and Corvette Racing, operating under Pratt Miller Motorsports, will run the Z06 GT3R in MSA and WEC during the 2024 season. With just over a month to go, the Z06 GT3R will make its racing debut at the 2024 Rolex 24 Daytona in January. And that's it, as we completed the full remake video history of Corvette Racing. Thanks to the most successful Corvette racing drivers of the last 25 years, Ron Fellows, Andy Pilgrim, Johnny O'Connell, Oliver Gavin, Olivier Beretta, Jen Magnuson, Antonio Garcia, Tommy Milner, Jordan Taylor, Nick Tandy, and Nikki Katzberg. If you thought this remake video is better than the original, please let me know in the comments. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and please smash the like button if you enjoyed watching this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for some more. Until next time, peace out, stay safe, Chris the Radar, out.